Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? Great. Awesome. Great. Awesome. Great. Awesome. All right. So, no cell phones. Sorry. I just don't want you to get distracted, and I see a lot of people get distracted with cell phones because we're all addicted to social media. So, uh, well, thank you for being here. Look at this. We had a good turnaround. I think more people are coming, and we have like 40 something hours to be at. I see 40 something people here. So, I'm assuming that more people are coming, but we're going to start because, you know, we all show up on time. I want to honor that. <clears throat> Who's done this before? I see some familiar faces. Okay. They're not rich yet? Well, <laughs> they might not be more than properly, <laughs> but they might be. Uh, so, I want to do a little disclosure, just kind of like a, for everybody. This is basically a thing that I do for something that worked for me. This is a book that was written many, many, many years ago in the 1900s by a guy named Napoleon Hill. And this gentleman was so nice that he dedicated pretty much over 20 years of his life doing research and living with the most successful people in the world at the time. So a lot of parts of the book specifically talk about with, with like a more like a male orientation game he is because of what's 1900s. So for all the ladies that are here, don't pay attention to that. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, a lot of things have changed in the last 118 years. And, uh, you know, whatever I'm going to tell you, whatever my interpretation of the book is, whatever's worked for me, I just want to share with you. This is not what I'm saying. If you don't agree with some things that I say, just let them go. Don't hang on that and don't get offended, please. Uh, it's not meant to have any religious orientation or, or any sexual orientation or any preference or anything. It's just basically what my interpretation for the book is, which each year I find something different and new for me. And I expect that from you, and that's why we do it over and over again. It's not like, oh, you read that book already. Yeah, but when you read that book last year, you weren't prepared to receive the message that the book had for you this year. So that's why we continue to do it. I read it like 12 times, I think, and every time I read it, I find something that, that I really like and it resonates with me. And that's what we're looking for right now. It's not about understanding the entire book. If you come here this eight next week, Fridays, and you find one or two little things that you can find value, I mean, that's worth, worth it, you know, it's worth the whole program. So thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Now that I'm warning you, and I can talk a lot of crap. Just kidding. <laughs> so who read the first two chapters? OK, that's pretty good. Uh, the reason why I like you to read the, the chapters that we're going to do today up front so we can talk about it and we all understand what we're talking about, as opposed to that I'm talking and you go and read it after the fact, it, I think it works better if you read it first. So next week you read three and four and so forth, right? So, you know, I mean, we all believe, I think, in a, in a major force that created everything, right, the world. You can call it God, energy, your higher self, it doesn't really matter. You know, I believe that there is a bigger source of energy, a bigger thing that I call it God, that is out there that he created everything, right? And as creator, he created the whole universe, created everything that is in here. Uh, and we as children of the creator, we have the ability to create our own universe, our own reality, our own life too. So you literally have that power inside you to do it. You just need to decide to do it and, and do it, right? So we're going to find the steps in here, how they can help you to train your brain and your mind to think in certain ways. And that certain way is basically believing that whatever your mind can conceive, if you believe in it, you can achieve it, right? It's been proven, it works, it worked for me, it continues to work for me, and it continues to work for a lot of people that I know, and we share this in common, and I know that some of them are sitting here right now, and, uh, and I hope they more join the club. So, starting with the first chapter, it talks about thoughts, right? And it says the thoughts are real things. So, so whatever you think and you put your focus on, it really starts creating out there and it starts like somewhere creating and redirecting your way. It takes time. So it's not just thinking about something or thinking positive. Okay? Yeah, being positive is a great thing, but it's not about just being positive but not really feeling positive. It's like, oh yeah, everything's gonna be okay, and inside you're like, 
oh, fuck, this sucks, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm broke, or whatever is that goes to your mind, because we have that chatter inside that's always constantly trying to distract us and distract us and distract us, right? So this is going to help you train not to get distracted by those voices inside you that keep continuing to take you out of track. Why? Because for many reasons. You know, we've all been raised in different places, go to different schools, uh, being taught that money doesn't grow in trees and all those things that, you know, people just say that and repeat it and grow and your great-grandfather told your grandmother, your grandmother told your mom and then just continue to tell you because that's what happens, right? So for me, the first time I get introduced to this and I read it, uh, I think I was 25. So what happens is for 25 years, my, my brain and my mind have been going this way. And that was my way of thinking. And I've been doing this for 25 years. So if I read the book, it's not going to go on that way, just like that, right? It's going to take time for you to start training your brain to go the other way. So it's taking me years, and I'm still learning, and I still struggle with certain things, and I still battle some things, but uh, you got to just you know, surround yourself with good people, good books, to continue to support that. So we're going to... At the end of this, we're gonna, I'm going to find a way how to pick couples. I mean, I think there are even numbers, and you know, we'll figure something out. But we're going to find a accountability partner here that we can call. And when like, you're struggling during the day, while we do this program, and if you want to do it after the program, that's great. Just someone that you can call in the morning and say, ah, my escrow just fell out, I'm feeling like off track. And then you have that person who's going to tell you, well, do this, or this is the way I feel, or whatever, you know? So you have that support. So I think it's important that you can, you can find an accountability partner here, I think, because in one of the chapters of the book talks about the mastermind group, which you're gonna get later on. And uh, it, it suggests that you go and create a mastermind group besides this, but I don't think that that's practical because we don't have a lot of time. We have a mastermind group here already. So I think if we couple with someone and we support each other, that'll be sufficient. So, in many places, you know, many teachers, um, including the Bible, says, ask and it will be given, right? And uh, we all heard that before, and it says, you know, many things, you know? But you got to be very clear what you ask, and you got to feel it, because there is actually, quantum physics have proved that when you feel something, and your organs, and your gut, and everything, there's a reason, and I can give you another book that's amazing, it explains in detail all that I'm reading right now that I'm blown away. Uh, it's called uh, uh, Becoming Supernatural. It's an amazing book. Uh, it explains that when you feel the feelings of what you're thinking, you actually generate an energy that goes out there. And you know, the way I see it is that it's all energy. It's all a matrix of energy that that feeling is going to bring people that feel that way, situations that they are in correlation with that, opportunities, and it's going to put you in a place where you're going to be ready to see that opportunity and take it. If you are not in, in, in that vibration, you won't see. It might be in front of your face, but you're not going to see it because you're not vibrating the same speed, level, color, whatever it is, right? So when you think about something, don't just think about something, right? Because you got to be clear messages to the universe. You need to be very clear, and that's what we're going to do in these first two chapters, is write down exactly what you want. And uh, it's important to make an ambitious goal, and it can be anything, it can be, uh, well, the book is called Think I Grow Rich, so most people think, oh, let's become rich, right? Yes, that's one, one part of it. But it can be in your personal life, it can be in your body, it can be in your relationships, it can be in everything that you have in your life. So you can start setting goals for where you want to be physically, you know, who you want to be with, what's the ideal person if you don't have someone that you would like to be with, how much money you want to have, where would you like to be in 10 years, and all that kind of stuff. We're going to do a lot of exercises, and, uh, and you're going to pick one that you like the best. For me, visualization is the most powerful tool, and I do that every night and every morning. So uh, you'll find what you like best. So when you think about something, just make sure that it's clear. Don't say, I want more money. Sure, here's a dollar. <laughs> right? It's more money. You need to have a precise number. What is that you want, and then you write it down. You have short-term goals and you have long-term goals, right? So, uh, so let's be clear with what we want. You know, uh, you read up uh, out of this chapter, and there's a lot of examples of people they have thought about something. You know, like this gentleman that 
when one of the work with Mr. Edison, and he just made his mind that he was going to go and be partners with him, not just work for him. He wanted to be partners with the guy. You know, probably everybody that knew him thought it was crazy, right? It was Edison and where he was at the point of time in his life, one of the most successful guys in the world. And this guy was a broke, non-education person in the middle of nowhere. But he just made up his mind. And when you made up your mind, there is an energy that radiates out there. And the universe wants to make it happen for you. You just need to believe it, you know? And that's when it talks about the chapter, which is the third chapter, which is Faith, right? And, and faith is an important element to all this. Because there's three parts of it. You ask, clearly, you believe, meaning you have faith that's going to happen, and then you got to be prepared to receive, which means you need to release it and wait, and don't get desperate. Just believe that's going to happen, and just wait, and it will happen when it needs to happen, when it's the best time to happen for you. So, this gentleman, you know, you read the story. Does anyone have any comments on that story, or what he did, and what was he able to achieve? No. First week, you're all very shy. <laughs> By the eighth, cha eighth chapter, everybody wasn't talking. <laughs> okay, so anyone wants to say anything about this? Anyone that has any comments? I mean, this is amazing that he, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't getting anything monetarily. Like he, uh, there's no example of anyone that has stuck to something for that long and was so dedicated and really, truly in his heart, it is a huge help. Right. Well, no, matter, no matter how many times you fail, no matter how many times you don't get it, no matter how many times you came here, and perhaps you came last year and it was cool, but you didn't really get, like Michelle said, that you're rich. Maybe you're not yet. <laughs> There's got to be a reason why it's not working out. It can simply be that it takes time. It doesn't happen like this, you know? Uh, it takes time for things to start to, like, it's like a seed. You plant a seed and you work and you water and you take care of it and, and then it starts to happen, you know? And there's an example in here that talks about stopping three feet from gold. Mm. You read that story? Mm -hmm. And how crazy yeah. is that? That's a real story, by the way, yeah. right? Most people would never make this. And that's what happens, you know? Like the seed's about to come out and it's right there and you're just frustrated. It's like, oh, this stuff doesn't work, whatever, and it goes away. So, Make your mind that it's gonna, you're going to stick to it until you see the results. And believe me, when you see results, and the important thing of writing down everything, like if I show you my journals and my books that I have on things that I've written, I think I show some briefing on Laura at the point that I was cleaning my desk or something, it's exactly what I put in there to happen. And when, once that happens, that's called the creative process. And when you experience that, it's amazing. Because now you know, oh shit. It really works, right? So then you want to do more. But all that has worked with me year after year after year, I still sometimes doubt. I still sometimes struggle. It's normal, you know? It's, it's fine. But you need to like catch yourself, see those, those thoughts come, look at them, and let them go. And then just continue to do what you need to do. And continue to think and be focused on what you need to be focused, okay? So that's with the, with those two stories, basically. Uh, any questions regarding that chapter? A short, easy chapter. No, not yet. If the tenacity of um, of him wanting to, even though he had a plan to strike gold and he was three feet short, but he found something else that brought him um, fame and fortune. So it wasn't like he gave up because he missed his opportunity and then he gave up completely on life. Right. He found something else right. that gave him a desire and, and actually that was probably what his real goal in life was, was to sell life insurance and become right. famous at it. So exactly. even if we fail in some small aspect um, in a career, we can always start somewhere else and be prosperous because we take the lessons that we've learned and continue on. Yeah, and well, that's super important. Us. Thank you for that. That's super important because you always win, right? You didn't find the goal, but he learned from the experience that you don't give up. So then he went and found gold in the insurance business, right? And that's what you do. It's like one day it might not work, but don't give up. 
I go to the next one, I go. That having the ability to move fast from one thing to the other one is, is something that we as real estate agents should really, really learn how to deal with. Like the day that you learn how, okay, this history just didn't happen, or this buyer went and bought with someone else, and all those things that makes us upset sometimes, right? Instead of hang in that moment and feel so strongly about those negative feelings that don't bring anything good, learn how to like understand what happened, it's okay to be upset, and now say what we're gonna do next, and move next and don't look back. Don't continue to look. Why would you do that to yourself? And I've done it to myself, right? A month goes by and I'm sitting in my bed and all of a sudden I think, that motherfucker, you know? <laughs> right? And then I get upset again and then you feel that again and you're just going back, right? It's like, I've done that. I mean, I know you all did it, right? You do it, yeah. right? So if you catch yourself that moment and like, boop, do something that's gonna take the attention out of that. I don't know, go on a run, go to the gym, jump in the ocean, dance, Blare some song that you like, whatever it is is going to take you out of that is what you need to be doing a lot. You're going to be doing a lot of that first, and then you're going to catch yourself easily, and you're just not going to even pay attention to that, right? So, so that's with that. The first step towards riches is desire, right? So, if you don't have a burning desire, like something, it's called a burning desire because it almost should burn something inside you that you want it so bad. Right? And it can be different things, and that's the beauty of this world. We don't all want the same, right? If not, we're pretty boring. So what is it for you that really gets you going, right? Again, personally, physically, you know, financially, in life, what's, what's your purpose on life? What, what is it that gets you going, like the, the main core of that? You need to have a very clear idea of what that is, and you need to write it down. Right? That's where the work now. Does everybody have workbook? If you don't have it, you need help finding it. Let us know. Laura knows how to find it. I think we post it in Connect, but if you're still having a hard time finding it, let us know, please. It's, it's important to have this. And you can use this, this workbook year after year. I use it for many times. And I compare the notes from last year to the other ones, and it's just pretty interesting to see how it changes. So. Exercise number one tells you to fix your mind, in your mind, the exact amount of money you desire. It's not sufficient to merely say, I want plenty of money. It's dead. Right? So just put the amount in there. And it needs to be an amount that is achievable, but it's also big enough where, you know, if you tell someone, they're going to be like, yeah, right. And that's a good way how to make it. Is this a for this year or is this the whole domain? This is a lot of money that you want to have and you'll be like, once I get there, I'll be cool, okay. although you won't. <laughs> Maybe you will. <laughs> Maybe I'm speaking for myself. No, uh, but uh, it's, it, that's a big amount. That's like, that's, you know, that sounds like a good figure. So just write it down. And then what I do that is not in here is I break that down in short term goals. Okay, so basically, for our business, what, how much you want to make in commissions, net commissions this year? Write it down. So now you have your yearly, you have your big picture. When is the big picture? 10 years from now? 20 years from now? kind of hard to tell. I don't think there is a room for that. So what I've done is 10 years ago, no, for 14 years ago, I, I picked a figure and I used that also for my meditations and visualizations. Like where I want to be for when I turn 44, 42, right? I picture what my 42nd birthday is going to be like and what I want to have, what's, what's my number there, and all the things that come with it. I don't want to tell you everything because I'm going to share all that harder with all the chapters. But uh, maybe it's when you turn this age. And I picked 42 when I was 26, 25, something like that. So for me, it was like a good amount of time to get there. 
it was a realistic goal, but it was also a, a high goal that kept me motivated and it keeps me motivated every day because I'm not there yet, right? So uh, I have three years and three months to go. <laughs> so uh, only those that become money conscious ever accumulate great riches. Money consciousness means that the mind has become so thoroughly saturated with the desire for money that one can see oneself already in possession of it. So when you see yourself in possession, what does that mean? Close your eyes, you visualize, and you see yourself. What does it feel like? Where are you? What are you wearing? Is it day? Is it night? What it feels like? You need to trick your brain that you're already there for this stuff to start to happen. And to trick your brain is going to take time, but you need to start. So Confucius said, he who thinks he can, and he who thinks he can't, they're both right. I like that. So you all read this, you can do the exercises. Do you have any questions on how to do this besides like the goal, the amounts, and uh, what you asked me so far? But you can go back home and you can do it, right? All right, number two, intention to give. Everything is an exchange. The energy doesn't flow unless that you give something when you take something. It's always gotta be an exchange, right? Always, with the most smallest thing, there's always an exchange, so the energy flows. So here, you know something that's a lot of fun. Determine exactly what you intend to give in return for the money that you desire, right? There's no such a reality as something for nothing. So you can write something here, something alone. I would like to give to, or I like to give by my services. I put because we have this customer service business. My time, my experience, my knowledge, my expertise, my goodwill. Any time is needed. Also, would like to give X percentage of each check or X percentage of my net income a year to this charity or to this whatever it is that you want to give back to the universe in gratitude to what you get, right? So write that down, super important that you write that down too because there is a, when you write something, it really gets into your brain. When you just say it or think about it, it, it when you write down, it's almost like you're imprinting that your brain too. Right? So, hey, how are you guys? Come in, come in. I think there is, uh, is there more chairs here? There's chairs over here. Yeah? There's a bunch of chairs here. Please come. You don't need to be standing with your high heels there. All right. <laughs>
You see, for me, like business plans are important. You have to have a business plan, especially when you're in business like we are. Uh, but uh, for me, what more important is the spiritual plan and, and, the, and the thinking plan, right? So if you do all this and you combine it with a business plan, the reason why I chose to do this program now, so we end up right before Thanksgiving, is because we all know that after Thanksgiving, things get a lot more relaxed and at the end of the year comes and, you know, the last thing you want to do is be between the holiday party sitting down thinking about your business plan. So if we do this, by the time we finish this, it'll give you a very good idea. Set up your goals and your plans for next year, so then you can go celebrate your, your holidays, and then when you come back next year, you're ready to go. Right? You need to be prepared because you don't want to start in January thinking about it. So by February, you haven't even started. You need to like start now, so you started, you're already rolling with some exports closing and, and stuff like that. What's your plan of action? Create a definite plan for carrying out the desire and begin at once, meaning now. Whether you are ready or not to put this plan into action. I'm going to go to the gym at the beginning of the month. How many people go to the gym in January? It's packed, right? Go in March. So that's basically just what about everything. Procrastination. People continue to say, I'll do it, I'll start Monday. No, it's Friday. That's, that's the wrong thing to do. You need to start now. If you want to change, you need to start how bad you want it. Three days are three days. Don't wait until Monday. So put in here, I want to sell as many homes as I can. Uh, I want to invest in, in spec homes I put at a point on time, which I, I was not doing at the time, and now I'm doing it as an example. I want to have an idea, I want to open a secondary business, I want to save money, I want to contribute to this. Whatever is in there, it doesn't have to be three. Put many, as many as you feel like, and then when you run out of it, then you stop. Okay. Number five. So this is, this is what's going to be a little bit challenging for you. Uh, which is basically the execution. And it happens in every business, happens, uh, I was talking to a client the other day who's become incredibly successful at a very young, young age, but uh, at a whole different level. And I was just asking him, you know, because in that business, you see a lot of people come up with amazing ideas. You know, it's, a, it's in the tech business. And I was at my house one time, we were talking about it, and I was like, what is it? I mean, what is about that thing that you did that is so special. I mean, how, what, what happens, right, from you've been doing this and then jumping to this level, right? And he said it's execution. Like, I got people who come to my desk now that they have better ideas than me, but they don't execute. Everybody wants the secret, but people drop the ball very, very quick. So you need to be persistent. Persistent, persistent, persistent. So here you're going to write down the exact amount of money I desire is blah, blah, blah. That's a big amount. And you can do two of these ones. You can do an statement for short term or one for long term, however you want. But I like to do the long term because this is like, you gotta read this twice a day. You gotta read this when you wake up and you wanna read this before you go to bed. And the reason why you do it when you wake up is because it sets the mood for the day and you know where you're going after. And the reason why you do it before you go to bed is because then you put it in your subconscious mind, which is really, the mind that communicates with DNA. So if you read it before night, that's really, really, really important. But don't just read it, right? Feel it as you read it. That's actually going to happen. So you go and read the exact amount that you have is blah, blah, blah. I intend to give the best of my every aspect or my expertise or whatever. And I expect to give X percentage on a good cause or whatever uh, in return for the money I desire. And make it short so it's not like a drag to read it every day. Uh, I intend to possess this money by the date. And then my plan of action is sell as many homes as possible, sell bigger homes, sell smaller homes, whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, invest in other businesses, uh, diversify on the stock market or whatever that you have opportunities on. Uh, saving, I mentioned this before, and then you sign it. You put the date when you need it, and you read that twice a day. Stick to it. And I think that's, that's for this chapter. I think you do all those exercises. You, uh, 
There's a lot more exercise in here that I'll let you guys do at the house. And if you have questions, you can always email me or call me or whatever. Don't 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 feel bad about no, you know I'm busy, but uh, I'm, I'm happy to help with it. Uh, you know, going deeper. Like if you want to really go deeper, you like list the three major disappointments in your life and just write them down. Don't spend too much time in it because you don't want to go back to those feelings or what happened in your life that you're disappointed for. Uh, this is actually more to like just bring into your awareness and then be good about what was the positive out of that experience. And that's what you really want to focus on, how you came out of that. Because you've done it once, you can do it many times. All right. So that's with desire. The workbook is not in correlation with this book, by the way. Okay, so you gotta bear with me as I jump to one book. So we did the first chapter, which was thoughts are things, which in the workbook is not there. In the workbook, the first chapter is a mix of that and the desire, which is kind of cover right now. So the starting point of all achievement is the first step to reaches is having that burning desire that we all want to work on, right down. Who has a burning desire already? Like clear, written down. Anything here that you guys, like something that caught your attention, that you really enjoy about that desired part of it that I'm not covering, you can help me out. Hmm? Uh, I thought the story about the army that was out man that came, came to shore on boats, and they had less right. men and less weapons, they were outmatched, and the general or head of that army decided we're working the only way to do this is to do something drastic and confirm the boats Thanks. before they went and said, the okay. only way we're getting out of here is to win because there's no way out why. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and that's where the, that was really that's an amazing story. If you want something that bad, it's like a death. It's figuratively. Well, but that ha actually happened in real life. Right, that happened, but even yeah. for us to think of that that time. Thank God we're in different times we don't have to burn a sheep and <laughs> die. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But you literally need to like think about that way. You need to be like, there's no, there's no time for plan B because it distracts me from planning, yeah. right? Yeah, and I want to add, it's always like, how badly do you want it? Right. Really, how badly do you want it? Because you can, you can say, oh, I want this. But no, really, do you feel that? Do you really feel that, that you want it so badly? It's not until you want it that badly right. that it's going to And if you don't feel that strongly, maybe you should pick another thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Try thinking about what might be other things that you desire, and then you'll quickly find out. You know, you'll feel what your call is for sure. There's always an option. You know, like right. there, there's even if the option is like burning the boats, like there's there's always an option, and that option creates opportunity, even if the option seems like it's the worst possible thing. Yeah. Right. I think to that point you have to make sure that the option that you're choosing is the one that you really want and allowing that to happen because burning the ships is, is, is making sure that there's no option except winning, right? And so in the daily minutia of thinking good thoughts and co-creating and thinking good positive realities, because nothing good ever came out of being bad, in that daily struggle of changing the bad thought to a good thought, you have to remember you're burning the ship. There's no other option. The option is my goal. And that's the option. And I can have a lot of really incredible goals and options, but I have to pursue that and allow it and receive it. And the daily minutia is where it gets difficult. In the bunny thing, this is kind of fantastic. But it doesn't have to be burn the shit. This is not fantastic. You can absolutely gotta check into that. And I think that's why this word book. And of course, just to bring that awareness and that consciousness is really helpful. Yeah, fun. 100 percent Yeah. Yeah, don't get confused on like if you choose one option over the other one. And there's no more options on your part, right? It's, it's the example that he gave uh, about the burning the ships and everything is no other than telling you that if you decide to do something, you could stick to it and you do it basically because there's no other option. But the reality is that there, there are other options in our time right now. So if something doesn't work, you shake it, get up, and go again. But the ability, you know, a good fighter is not who can throw the hardest punch. Who can receive the hardest punch and continue to go? Interesting, also.
talks about like the mental options, right? Like, yes, we have options in this day and age, but you know, even if you make a mistake in hindsight, that brought you to this place that's going to now lead to the next great thing as long as you stay the course of believing that this is the path that you're supposed to be going on. 100%. So, so you gotta, you gotta be consistent and you're gonna exhaust everything on that option that you chose, right? To the point that it fails. And then choose another option. Don't go on like, well, this is a great option and do it for three months. It's like, maybe that's a better option. Or maybe that's a better option. Like, but I mean, I want a really good option. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. you learn well, it's from possible, failure. Yeah. You learn from failure. Um, so I think you have to be open to fail before you're going to say. But you might, you might not, you know, you might not fail yet. You might be right. in the process of making something happen, right. and then someone comes and distracts you with something. Like I meet a lot of real estate agents, and they're like, "Oh, by the way, I sell this in the midday, and I do that, and how about that?" And talk about like, you're never going to make it if you're doing. I mean, I. And I'm sure that some people in here do a couple of things because in the beginning you need to support yourself and you start actually generating deals that keep you track. Like in the beginning I was waiting tables and doing this, that is fine. But if you get to a point where you're getting busy and you really need to do that, don't start doing too many things because then, you know, whoever does too many things doesn't really become great on anything. So, but this is, you know, you need to like really understand what a good option is or what not, or when's the time to bounce out of the thing that is not working and go to something better. Like Michelle said, it might get another big opportunity. So you just need to be really careful. And doing this and being in tune with yourself is going to help you, you know, understand and recognize what and when. Just being always, you know, why this is more important for me than writing down how many doors I'm going to knock or doing all the exercises or everything, which are important. I'm not taking away from all the things that we need to do as real estate agents. But for me, you can do all that. And if you're not in alignment with yourself, for me, it doesn't work. But if you are in alignment and then you do that, then it's clearly, clearly going to work a lot better. Yes. So, the, okay. and also the desire, like, I guess it goes with like having a certain foundation of belief that like with, with his son, am I going ahead or is this in that chapter? Yeah. It's, it's in the chapter. It is in the chapter. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's huge to me because he had no knowledge if that was really going to happen. But he believed it with all of his heart. Yeah, a lot of people have no knowledge that you could do that. 300 people in a metal cylinder and fly from here to New York, right? Right. That <laughs> happen. Yeah. Right? So it's the same thing. It's like we have the power to create. It doesn't have to be already someone did it for you to do it. You are as strong as this man, right? So we covered that. That's the story. This portion of it that mental chemistry works magic. That's a really cool portion of this chapter, actually. <laughs> About this woman, or the singer. Chemistry, which I told you about that book that I'm reading, explains how 
that actually breaks down in a more scientific level, uh, which he has never divulged. Nature wraps up in the impulse of a strong desire. That something which recognizes no such a word as impossible and accepts no such a reality as faith. There are no limitations to the mind except those we acknowledge. We hear this all the time. We just don't fucking do it, right? We hear these things, we hear this science, we know about it. There is the Bible, there is this, there is that, there is books, there is everything. It's just, again, execution. It's like, just pick something and do it until it works, you know? And, uh, and that's one thing about this book. It's like, find something that you really like. Like, one thing that you really like and it works for you, and do it for five years and then call me. <laughs> Both poverty and riches are the offspring of thoughts. So that's basically the first two chapters. They're pretty cool, I think, easy to understand. Uh, once you're open to, to work with this, and you know, sometimes because where we've been raised or what we thought, these things might be like, oh, that's kind of weird, right? Uh, that's fine, you know, like. It works. It's like gravity, right? It's gonna work. I don't care if you're a nice person or you're a bad person. If you go to the ninth floor and jump to San Vicente, we know what the result's gonna be. Gravity is there. It works for everybody. It doesn't matter how nice you are. Uh, with this thing, it's the same. It works if you use it. It's always working. The trick is to use it to your favor. So instead of being negative or or or, or, or thinking about stuff that didn't work, which we tend to focus on what didn't work as opposed to what should work or what I want to work. And, and it doesn't have to be happening either. You know, it's easy when it happens, right? Because you have it. Oh, I got this new phone. It's so cool. I'm so happy right now. It's beautiful. I mean, what a beautiful design. You feel it. It's easy, right? You have it. It's, it's here. But if you learn how to do that, not having the phone, and you feel those feelings of having it, although you don't have it, and you can develop that skill, that's what this to me is about. And, uh, and this is pretty, pretty exciting to see a big group of people. Awesome. How many are we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Right. Is this kind of like a fake it till you make it kind of thing? Is that what you're trying to say? Like, feel it as if you have it, but then you'll know how it's to it's not, it's not faking it because every thought is a creation. So it's not fake, it's just you don't have it yet, right? Yeah, so right. it's not it's not really faking it. I mean, you could say that, but it's not, I don't really... Yeah, I don't mean it literally, but I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's but it's not because you got to believe that if you're thinking it and you're feeling it, like if you all close your eyes and feel eating a Krispy Kreme, <laughs> right? Your body is going to start segregating enzymes, getting ready for you to digest you're going to start like smiling because it tastes so fucking good. You know, that, that's an easy example, right? So if you do that, now use that same exercise to what it's going to feel, to whatever is that, you know, being on a vacation in Turkey, uh, I don't know, whatever is that gets you excited, if you use that same thing and you work on it, that's already there, exists, it's there for you. You just need to have faith and wait until you actually can hold it. So it's real, it's as real as it gets. Everything. I mean, the more detail there is, and the more time you spend, and the one thing when I realized that it started working for me is when you close your eyes and you start feeling those feelings and doing, automatically you start smiling, right? Because you're happy and, uh, you know, do things that make you feel good. What gets you excited, what you enjoy, it's a vacation, it's being on the sand, it's jumping in the ocean, it's sitting in a boat, it's, uh, it's being in the forest, it's, it's reading a book inside, whatever it is, that you connect with and you feel good, it starts feeling that already, like you're there. And the more you practice that, that creation is, is already there and it's a matter of time that it's going to come your way where you don't expect it. The why is not important, oh sorry, the how is not important. You start really focusing, how, how is that going to happen? But I'm like, yeah, how am I going to get there or how? Then you're screwed. You, you don't worry about the how, just be clear what you want, have faith 
and know that's going to happen and then wait and continue to do what you're doing, which as, as real horses, continue to work, continue to cold, cold, or no, whatever it is that you do see open houses, you need to continue to that knowing that this is, uh, you know, part of your life's going to get you where you want to be. Would it, help, would it be helpful to tie that into the, what the, the concept of the uh, science of getting rich? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's an amazing book. I read that book too. I went to a seminar. Uh, the Science of Getting Rich is a, is, a, is a little thicker than this, and it's a little bit more deep and uh, I wouldn't say complicated, but it, it requires a lot more. But the main thing of the Science of Getting Rich is not what you do, it's how you do it. Right? When you go to an open house and you show up at 2 or 5 after you're sweating because you ran to put your signs in the last minute. And there are people waiting outside, and you're pissed, and you open the door, and you turn on the lights halfway, and uh, it's not the same way that you prepare yourself and you put signs earlier. You go there 15, 20 minutes before, you open the house, you turn on the candles, you bring up flat, whatever it is that you're doing that to the best, right? And that's the difference. It's like, you know, what you do is how you do it. There can be two people doing exactly, and in that book they give you example like, I don't remember the name, but real ice cream shops that were here in the United States where they were doing the same thing, selling ice cream next to each other, but one was way more successful than the other one. It was because the guy that owned the shop was always happy, had music, you know, he put that energy out there that people were attracted to and the other guy didn't do it. So it was just, the other guy was showing up because he needed to show up. It's like, fuck, I gotta go and sell ice cream again. <laughs> you know? So that's that's kind of the difference. So it does, it does tie to it. Uh, with this one. If you guys want to wanna look into that book that I told you, it's called Becoming Supernatural by Dr. Joe Dispenza, which is a... Uh, George Dispenza. Yeah, Joe. Joe. J-O-E. Uh, for those that really want to understand more, like, well, how that exactly works, it, just, it really breaks down on your... how it works chemically, physically, uh, and uh, it talks about the quantum universe, too. What have you done tools or what have you done to trigger uh, keeping negative thoughts out? I mean, we all have it, and it's like coming at us. Deal, hook up, lost the client, and what? And that's why I do this. I and mean, this is my way to kind of like share with you my experience that worked for me. And I think if it worked for me, it should work for everybody that's in the room. Right? Uh, and practicing the exercise, and there's what's going to get you to stay away from the negative. It's, it's, a, it's a constant battle that you need to fight. There's no choice. And what's going to happen is that the more you do it, that negative thinking, that negative way, that old way of you being you, is going to fade away and it's going to become stronger and then it's going to become a lifestyle. It's not, oh, I'm feeling negative right now, but I'm in my house, I'm going to do this thing. And then you go out and you forget about it and then the next two months you're not doing anything and you go back to what you're used to. It's like, you have to stick to it and you got to do it and it becomes a lifestyle, you know, that's how you live your life. You wake up every morning, you exercise, you meditate or whatever you do, everybody has different ways and everybody has different lifestyles. Somebody has kids, somebody doesn't have kids, whatever it works for you. If you wake up in the morning and you have this lifestyle, when you show up in your appointments, when you go in a meeting, when you go in this thing, people will feel that energy and will be attracted to it, not knowing what it is, they just, just have to tell you. right? I'd like to offer to my man TV a couple exercises that I've picked up. Great. Are some teachings we'll call like a rampage of appreciation. When you're getting in that zone in your bed and you're like that MF her to think something positive related or not related to the situation and think 10 positive things. By the time you're getting through 10, you've shaken it up. Right. And then another one is to stop and count five, four, three, two, one. And that resets psychologically. You're, I don't know, I watched some. Well, there's one that resets your body through breathing. I'll tell you right now when you're done. And then, and then what you do after that is you think a positive thought, and it retrains you a little bit to get out of it. And at least in that minutia of that one negative thought, it changes it to a positive thought. And you burn the shit in that moment. Yeah, and it's like simple things like that. They just work by the simple thought that you're taking that out of that and you're counting. You already stop thinking because you need to think about the numbers. That's so you gotta catch yourself thinking that. Yeah. Challenge. Yeah, and, and what happens is now that you came here and we're talking about this, you're becoming more aware of it. 
So I know it happened to you and uh, people have been doing these, Alex, you. Uh, you'll see like in the next few weeks, you're going to catch yourself a lot. You're going to be like, shit. <laughs> like you're going to catch it because now you're aware. It's like when you, you decide to buy a car, right? And you didn't think about that car, but now you're thinking about that car. It's like, I really like that car. And now you see it everywhere. Right? It's like, oh, I didn't know there were so many of those. <laughs> but that's kind of like the same, you know? It's like, it's bringing awareness to catching yourself when you're going that direction and just turn around. And whatever you find, it's always saying, like, whether it's those exercises, whether it's going in a run, put some, crank some cool music, anything that's gonna snap you out of that and take you in another direction, just do it. And, you know, there's different, I mean, there's a cool uh, breathing exercise that you can do and try, it works for you. It's called 4 7 11. Doesn't mean that I'm gonna meet you at 7 11 at 4 o'clock. <laughs> uh, so basically, what you do is you take a, a deep breath for four seconds, and then you hold it for seven seconds, and then you let it go for 11. And then you do that three times. I do that when I get home and I park in my truck. <laughs> 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 it's true. I mean, like, you know, I don't want to go to my house with the last phone call that I have that could be a great call, maybe not, but I go home, I pull in, I do my exercise, and it resets actually chemi you know, the chemistry of your body, and you, you just fresh. Can you repeat it again? Four, four seconds, seconds, you take a deep breath, meaning slow. One, two, three, four, and you hold it for seven, seven. seconds, and then you exhale for 11. So very slow. Don't blow the air pretty quick. Any other questions? We have five minutes for any more questions. Can you elaborate a little bit more about how to get into that feeling that when you still don't have it? How do you get yourself into it? She says, elaborate for 41. We're streaming this, so I'm going to repeat it for everybody here. She's asking if I can elaborate more into how to get in that feeling when you want something and you cannot get into that feeling. There's different ways to do it. For me, uh, visualizing gets me there. Sit in a quiet place, sit, don't lie, you fall asleep. Uh, I fall asleep, I don't know what happened to you. But if you sit and you start breathing and then you close your eyes and you start imagining eating that donut, believe me, it's gonna, you know, so start with something simple and, and easy, like probably not a donut, but uh, but something that you think that is achievable, fairly quick, and you can get there, uh, and you can start feeling that, and start training yourself up to owning a private jet. I don't know what turns you on, you know, and what it will feel like driving your car to Venice Airport and uh, getting out your car and walking in your jet and sitting there and not having to go to costumes, whatever, you know. So just just go through what that's going to feel like in detail, and the more detailed you are, and the more deeper you go and take your time and don't be interrupted, that, that exercise is really good for what you ask me. Cool? One more? That's it? How much time do you spend doing this? 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night. Sometimes maybe at night one hour, depending on how tired I am time and, but a minimum 30 minutes so one hour a day you sit for 30 minutes and you visualize mm -hmm. yes well i start with the with gratitude which usually helps you get into the, into the vibration you want to be so i start in the morning on being grateful that i'm awake right that i can walk that that i have a house that i have my family sleeping there i mean like you think about all the things you're grateful for and that puts you already in a the state of your energy that's good and then you can go into the visualization or some people which i do sometimes is, is meditation right which is the opposite of visualization it's like you visualize you try to think about something that you want which is great because it's taking your thoughts from negative thoughts to positive and getting you those feelings to create something but there's also a big big you know important positive on just meditating which means thinking on and zero, you know, uh, and that's been a little harder for me. I've done it a few times to where I actually felt that I was like in that nothing, 
right? And that's what that book that I'm doing right now teaches you that really everything is, is not three dimensional because like there's, there's a whole energy that is really, you're part of that big thing. So you're not tall, you're not short, you're not, you're nothing. You're just it, right? And uh, being there, what it does, it quiets everything and it allows you to re receive information that you need to be at a whole different level. So it's, it's all about practicing and finding what works for you. A lot of people like to do the walking meditation, which you're walking and you're just breathing and you just talk so much in the walking and the breathing that you're actually not thinking in anything else than walking and breathing and counting. So there's different ones. Uh, probably 14 years, 15 years, 14 years, yeah. But time flies. One of the things I was looking at my books and my notes, and I'm like, 2006, and I was like, I want to have an Honda Accord. <laughs> <laughs> right? I was like, oh my god, it goes so fast, you know? <laughs> Who introduced me to the book? Um, nobody. I, uh, I was reading, and I was listening to these uh, tapes or CDs. I don't know if you heard about Abraham Hicks, no. you know? So the husband and wife, the husband passed away, but apparently the wife channels the energy and speaks on all these positive things and everything. So I was listening to that, and the guy is the guy that speaks, the husband. And, uh, and he mentioned the book, and uh, it sounded really interesting, so I went to a... Uh, there was a Barnes and Nobles or some one of those stores back in West Hollywood that they closed on the CNN and Third. There was a big one right down there. Borders. Yes, yes. that one. Uh, and then I bought it. I mean, look, it's like so. Nobody really introduced me, but then I, once you read it and you learn about it and you start <coughs> meeting people that knows about it, and like we are right now here, and we all know about it, and we all supporting each other, right? So uh, after I read this book, uh, I read. The Science of Getting Rich, which is a very cool book too. And there's a seminar that Bob Proctor does, which is a very known guy in this area. And then obviously I got, got hooked up with Tony Robbins, which is amazing. And I done all the courses and read all the books and I listened to all the CDs. So, uh, and Tony is it's more like action. It's like, I can do it, you know? It's like, no, like, this, all this is great, but it's not you do it. The other ones, you know, Intense. Yeah. So, oh yeah, it's great. Anyone else? You're good? I just want to share something that yes. might be helpful uh, to get into a state right in the morning. Like when you just open your eyes, I learned this from someone I follow, um, and I've been doing it for the last year. Uh, as soon as I open my eyes, I just say, today I am happier, healthier, wealthier, stronger, more fit than I was yesterday. And I repeat that five to ten, ten times before I even get out of bed, and it just like puts you in this like, yeah. great mindset to get going. I do the same thing in the treadmill. When I'm warming up, the 20 minutes walk before I work out, I repeat that the whole time. Like, some people think I'm crazy, bro. Mm -hmm. And the gym's like... <laughs> Nobody that. wants to run next to me. Because <laughs> I say a lot. John, uh, what, what is it? Is Jeff Sander here? His experience, that side, side here? So they come to the gym a few times and they, they know that it's true. <laughs> All right, guys, this was fun, I hope. Thank you. So, Thank you. Uh, ourselves for the next now what I like to do is let's, let's can we pour two lines over here like one here I think we're 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47 48 49 50 51 52 53 54 55 56 57 58 59 60 61 62 63 64 65 66 67 68 69 70 71 72 73 74 75 76 77 78 79 80 81 82 83 84 85 86 87 88 89 90 91 92 93 94 95 96 97 98 99 2000 2001 2002 2003 2004 2005 2006 2007 2008 2009 2010 2011 2012 2013 2014 2015 2016 2017 2018 2019 2020 2021 2022 2023 2024 2025 2026 2027 2028 2029 2030 2031 2032 2033 2034 2035 2036 2037 2038 2039 2040 2041 2042 2043 2044 2045 2